ups and downs, dude. Ups and downs. Ideally not on camera. Anyway. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the show. Neil, pick up the fat lab with you here in the mother fluffing house. And the terrible green background can mean only one thing. We are on with me old mate, Monster Michael Todd. <laughs> mate. It's fair to say it's been quite a <laughs> quite a three four week period for you in between bouts of putting your friggin hip out of joint or whatever the hell you did, uh, getting AIDS, your dick nearly falling off. Nice to see that your dick has not in fact fallen off. Last time I am so thankful to that fact. You know what I'm saying? Because it got questionable there for a minute. Yeah, you know it's quite bad. Like yeah, yeah. good. Last time myself and Michael spoke on the phone, the man was having issues that no man should ever face in life. It was a rough, rough few weeks for sure. <laughs> but, mate, it's been positive. Within the negative, there's been some amazing positives. Your channel's gone through the roof. You're going stratospheric. It had some significant growth, and I'm very grateful and appreciative. I've got a lot of really good support online right now. I'm not getting near as much hate. Uh, Corey has had some pretty cool... Uh, events happened in the last couple of weeks, you know, getting a pull with John Zink and pull Travis Bage and all that stuff. And uh, we've been doing some good content, even since we got back from the collabs with GG Tom, Dev and all that. So truly a blessing, man. Feel great. Obviously, the, we'll, we'll touch briefly because I know everybody's talked it to death and I'm sure you've probably had enough of it. But uh, I'd like to get yourself and Devon on and speak to both of you at the same time to expose what actually happened when you guys met up there. But let's be honest, mate, it couldn't actually have gone. I mean, we've spoken about it on The Fix. I don't know whether you've seen that show. We spoke about it on various other things. Couldn't have actually gone better. Because what that's done is just put a fire under the match. It's reignited that interest in the match. And to be fair, nobody really learned a great deal from that encounter because you trained your ass off earlier that day. I mean, we spoke uh, that day and you were already in terrible condition. Devon showed up after just climbing off a flight. You had fun. You had a little bit of a tear up. Nobody really got injured, learned anything about each other that you didn't already know. So it's it's ignited the interest. But there's so many questions there. God only knows. But you 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 looked in a good place after it when you went over there and you were doing your collab with Tom and Juju. You didn't look down about it. You seemed to be having fun. I mean, you know, your mates with Devon. So no, it turned out really well. Um, it was 100% a surprise to me, but. The fact is, people got to see us on the competition table and, and have our rivalry that we do. But then they also got to see us off the table and, you know, through the uh, leg workout video and the revolving ladder video that I did, plus the piece that we did on my channel after the match. Um, people got to see that we're very supportive of one another. And, you know, arm wrestling is a big family union getting together arm wrestling. So we, uh, we've we been friends a long time before we uh, all this social media made us into, you know, enemies and rivals and stuff. So. Funny how, funny how uh, social media can do that. It sort of paints one guy as the, the baddie, one ba guy as the goodie. When often, um, the funny thing is, unless you're on the inside circle of the sport, you probably don't realise the close proximity of the relationships that all the pullers have, particularly the top lads, because you, you know, you, you're seeing these guys for years, year after year after year, all over the world, and we, you have so much fun. I mean, it's just a great atmosphere. Oh, absolutely. So, <clears throat> It's intense on the table, but as soon as you're off the thing, it's, you know, let's go to the after party and have some fun. And I, and I don't think that really comes across. Uh, I, don't, I think a lot of the people that are new to the sport, new fans, they, they don't understand that, you know, these guys very, very well. Um, and Absolutely. you and Devin. Some of the best times, some of the best memories aren't, aren't on the table. It's after the Absolutely. table. Having dinners, just laughing at the bar or whatever, you know. Um, or, Maybe pulling a thousand matches on the floor of the hotel when who's the mother? It could be, yes, it could be some of those. Could be some of those with those big pillows for everyone. Big guys. ass pillows. Dude, all I needed was duct tape that day and I'd have beat him up. <laughs> the, the origins of freedom arm wrestling on a, <laughs> on a yeah, low sofa I'm in a Manchester hotel. Awesome, dude. But, yeah. mate. A lot of things coming up as well. I mean, we're going to pick up on your uh, from where we left off with your life story. But also, just wanted to touch briefly on the fact that you've got big things planned. You're going over to uh, Dubai, um, see Larry Wheels, get some training in over there, and do some collab stuff. That should give your channel another bump, I would imagine, mate. 
Oh, man. That, okay, so obviously getting to hang out with Larry, feel the college guy, see what his potential is, all that great stuff, YouTube channel. But I've just wanted to go to Dubai for my entire life, I guess. You know what I'm saying? Well, a cool experience, I mean, you know, isn't it? Uh, I, like I said, I've never got to go. I know you went over there in 06 and you did the, uh, the Devin Tars match. Um, we did Kuwait City in 2014. Amazing okay. experience. Mm-hmm. And, uh, we wanted to go back to, I mean, we, we, since then, we've tried to f- find a way to get to Dubai and then, was just a few hours after the match, me and Devin got released on YouTube. Uh, Larry Wills messaged me and said, "Hey, I'd love to, you know, have you come to Dubai." And I was like, "Awesome!" So when? <laughs> exactly, exactly. There you go. <laughs> yeah. So my now mom. my only concern is that I don't get COVID in the next four days, so that I can have a negative uh, COVID test ninety six hours out, so I can I can actually get on the plane. And how are we looking over there? Is it is it is it really bad in your area, or not too bad? Oh right? yeah, I mean. I mean, people are, I think they have new cases, quite a few new cases every day. Um, mm-hmm. So, and I've done a few beat the champs recently where I, I gripped a bunch of people's hands. And uh, Rebecca was pretty pissed about that. She's like, Y'all, you better not mess up my trip to Dubai. <laughs> you know, but I had all these beat the champ shirts from, uh, I had a thousand of them printed earlier this year because I was going to do that arm wrestle a thousand people at the, or, uh, St. Patrick's Day Parade here. Like well, you were, you were on one the other day when you were going to come on in the presence of greatness, and you had to pull out of the show because you were wrestling dressed as God of War, I think, somewhere, you said. Well, no, I had done the God of War the year before, and um, that video didn't get as much stuff. So the night before, that Halloween night, I did one at a biker bar. The next day, I did one at a pizza pub here in town, and so I had to get over there and get to that. That's why I couldn't be on in presence of greatness. But And also, you've had quite a lot of, of, of events over there. I've seen you refereeing and... Putting some stuff on Daniel Mosier. Whoa! Shout out to Mo- Dan's looking a bad mother. Uh, I mean, a very that- real chance he's the best two hundred two hundred pound arm wrestler in North America. There's a very real chance of that. Wow! So you've got him ranked that high? Oh, absolutely. Fact, I mean, lightning fast Mosier at the man, moment. He's I mean, strong right now. Like yes. he's not just speed. He's strong. His hand is strong. Um, very impressive young man. Uh, oh, without that, and a lovely bloke and all. He's a nice lad. Dan's the nice dude. I mean, we had him over for the Arm Wars. Great guy. Very, uh, very humble bloke. Massive, massive amount of potential. I mean, he was back. He's trained with some amazing pullers. Trained with Craig Touye over there, obviously. Um, and, for, you know, I know Craig's had some injury issues this year, but probably just before Craig got injured, I think Dan was pushing Craig. He was right there. And you think he's improved even more? No doubt. Okay, so he took second as Lottie last year, 189 pounds, whatever it was. Yeah, it was great. Um, had a great outing. Significantly better now, in my opinion. Like, do you pull, do you. you pull a lot with Dan over there? Do you, do you guys need to pull several, several, two, I've had two practices um, where I went down. We went on a cruise last year. Mm-hmm. Was, then we went on a cruise this year. January this year, I went down there and pulled with him. Went back again probably in August, and he was already better in August than he was in January. Amazing. Well, every credit to him. Daniel's a Daniel's a guy who served his time in the sport. He, and, and and every credit to the lad. I hope he hope he does really well. In fact, I'm gonna say um, I've been traveling a couple of days with my boys out on their bikes, but uh, I think Herman Stevens left me a message or tagged me in on something, and I believe that Herman and Dan had a match. I haven't actually seen it yet, guys. Apologize for that. But from what I gathered, <clears throat> it sounded to me like Dan must have won that as well. So, yeah. Racking up Dan, the results. Dan, Dan Strong, young man right now. You know what I'm saying? Lovely dog. So let's get into the thick of it, buddy. Where I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ask your encyclopedic knowledge and memory of where the fluff we were up to in the last episode of the Monster Michael Todd story. I think we're in the 500 series, but I'm not sure yeah, where. We were finishing up the, uh, the outcome of the 503 match with Dave Chafee, which for me was a, a legacy moment, being mm-hmm. the first open weight, right-handed, three-time hammer holder, uh, meant a lot to me. So that was a huge, huge victory. It, um, it's something that I took a lot of pride in. And to, to do it against Dave, who uh, it was also his opportunity to be the first ever three-time right-handed open weight hammer holder, um, meant, was, was huge. And so we were talking about that, and then I had a – Rebecca was calling me, so we had to get off. But <laughs> I don't, Shoulders yeah. came in and – I don't, know what, I don't remember what it was, but I'd missed several calls from her because it was three months ago, mm-hmm. and I had to get off the phone to check see what was going on. 
Yeah. Not long I ago, my God. Forgot, that I think he just forgot that I was on an interview or something. You know? How good's Dave Chaffee, Michael? Because, you know, Dave if you is around the world. That probably there is, you know. Um, I think Dave Chaffee under PALWAF FIFA <laughs> rules is as strong as anyone. Um, meaning, I don't think Devin beats him under those rules. You know, I, I think uh, unless Devin would commit 100% with his shoulder, which he may be able to do now because he's mm-hmm. done a lot more cup training uh, in the last year or so. So maybe Devin could go bone to bone with him. But Devin Kingsley wouldn't hold up under uh, PAF rule. Wow. So you, you, able, yeah, you, you really think that if Devin had met Dave under a different set of criteria or under a strict World Arm Wrestling Federation or PAL criteria, you you genuinely believe that Dave would win that match? I believe so. I mean, I, that just from that's from competing against both men. Um, mm-hmm. Devin has more options. Dave's more powerful. And what Devin about the King's move, Dave? Do what? What about this, the King's move, though? We got we got to, we got to. I don't want to do this to death, really, on the King's move. But the one thing that is definitely apparent is that the King's move is problematic for ninety nine point nine percent of arm wrestlers in the world. And Devon, outside of yourself in the heavyweight division, Devon is the most prolific Kings mover uh, that I know of. Now, that was obviously the big difference when he when when he pulled against Dave. Interestingly, and which we touched on in the last show, when you pulled Dave, there was far it, it looked like you were far more comfortable, and it was probably the clearest evidence to date of the evolution of your King's move. So in other words, the app, and we talked about this the other day, I had a, in the presence of greatness show, the show that you, you couldn't attend actually, but we were talking about that in there. And I said that I thought that your King's move at the moment was very different from most people because of the fact that the application of the style is far more closed than it used to be. And far more closed than Devon's currently is. He's much more open. And, and a lot of the, the criticism that surrounds the King moves tends to be that a King's mover drops below the table with the shoulder. You know, all the stuff around when Jeff Hale faced it in the, in the World Arm Wrestling Federation, there's a lot of bullshit went on around that. But you've sort of, cr- you've crossed a, a real bridge there because you're nowhere near as open as you used to be. Are you very conscious of that, mate? Have you sort of evolved that technique on purpose? Because let's be honest, you've taken some serious heat over the years on that. Yeah, I mean, I I started making adjustments about a year and a half ago, probably. Um, But I think a lot of it also is from having Corey as a training partner. Mm -hmm. We, I'm very, very offensive now. Um, And I think a lot of that is due to the the art arm handle, heavy, heavy, um, lifts that I've done from the, the 275 for single, 255 for five, 225 for 15 actual weight, you know, um, I'm just trained in a way where I have someone who I can hit on. Yeah. You know, I'm not having, like, when I say I can hit on him, like originally we would use bands. I'd hit on him and bands. Now, uh, we go pretty hard. You know, sometimes, you know, if I find, if, if I realize the gap is there, then I'll let him, you know, get in a position or something like that, but it's uh it's been it's been definitely nice to have this. So yeah, I mean I, I don't think I'm anywhere near a King's move. And and it's very difficult to be in a King's move if you're hitting for the pad. You know what I mean? <laughs> like I'm hitting to pin you most of the time. Yep. Uh funniest thing was I heard Don Underwood do an interview the other day on Uncle John After Dark and uh he's talking the Woody hasn't pulled me in, in a decade. And he thinks, you know, yeah, you know, I'd, I'd hit Michael to the pad like everyone else does. I'm like, you clearly haven't watched me lately. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. I'm the one taking off first, you know. Uh, I'm, so it's funny because even people who have seen me still think that, that I'm just being defensive. And yeah. I'm attacking. And I'm more, attacking. more than ever in your career, for sure. Your, your style back in the day, pre-Kings move. Pre King's move, you were known for your defensive strength. That was your thing. Best defensive arm wrestler in the world was always the claim I, I used to put against you. You could win matches you weren't supposed to win, and you were almost comfortable in there. That you know you'd you'd stop a guy, woo, off we go, entertaining stuff. 
Good times, mate. Uh, some of the most yeah. entertaining matches of all time. Uh, you know, live and direct straight out the box. Deep Water, yourself and Marcio Barbosa, one of my favourite matches in history because of the fact that it was that epic career-ending death war in positions that you don't want to be in and you don't want to win from. But my God, it's entertaining when somebody's in it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's like watching Frodo Hoagland compete. Yeah. It's been, it's reminded me so much of who I used to be, you know. Yes, um, yeah. And I've said it for years and still to this day, there's not a position on the table right hand that I'm uncomfortable in unless I'm touching the pin pad. Mm-hmm. I can win from anywhere on the table, you know. Um, and if the match stops anywhere, I'm like, all right, cool. And and that's funny because I was listening to you talk about um, how I was in uh, Rhoda's <laughs> corner telling him on how to win that match against Martin Zanger. Yeah. And uh, oh, okay. it's funny, and I'm sure you're like this as well, but you're watching an arm wrestling match. Say you're watching it on YouTube, whatever. You can pause the match, any match, anywhere, and I'll know how to win from, from either guy. I'm yeah. like, well, if I'm that guy, I'm going to do this. If I'm this guy, I'm going to do that. You know, And it's not Absolutely. the stuff we have to think about. No, it's, it's stuff that we know. Somebody throws you an orange, you just yeah. you catch yeah. I mean, an orange. There it is. Yeah. I, just, I, I, yeah. That's just what arm wrestling for 30 years does to someone, you know. <laughs> and it's not like we've been arm wrestling for 30 years and we haven't competed. Like, traveled the world. You know what I'm saying? The for world. 30 years. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's not like I just hung out in I mean, that's a lot of places. Because there's a lot of people who have arm wrestled their 30 years in the sport, but they haven't taken it as seriously as I have. Thank you, Michael Todd, for saying what I often think. There's 30 years in the sport, and there's 30 years in the sport, and there's five years in the sport, plus, you know, if you're in for five years, but you're really in. I'm talking embroiled in it, where you're everywhere. I went through a few years of my career, and this is not an idle comment, this is the truth. I have no wife, kids, commitments, anything. Criminally, you know this, but criminally obsessed with the sport of arm wrestling. And there was not a single weekend outside of Christmas and New Year when I was not at somewhere else in the world arm wrestling. Either training or an event. Another, the, the year later, I pulled 42 international tournaments in a year, 42 international tournaments. Yeah, in 2001, I pulled 35 events. I pulled 26 in 2000, 35 in 2001. I thought I had the record. I had no idea you pulled 42. 42 is my the best. I didn't I didn't know you'd done that many, but 42 is my that's my most sponsor. active year. So they covered all my expenses. So I would load yeah. up like four guys in a car. And we'd split it four ways, and then I'd turn in all the receipts. So I'd make, like, if it's 500 bucks, I paid 125 I turned in 500 That trip I think made you me mentioned that five. earlier in one of yeah, the shows. So I went on every weekend if I could, you know. I well, knew I was getting paid. It's in your fiber, dude. You know yeah. what I mean? I mean, how, when we go to these tournaments, how many times are we, you know, it'll be 3 a.m. in the morning. We're still sat there talking about arm wrestling. For right. the competition, but they're about talking about arm wrestling. It just, it's, it's in you. And so many other guys. I mean, it's funny. I was reading a comment the other day. After the in the presence show that we had the other day with Spotto and Devon, and it goes back a little. Good episode. Lip. That was a good episode. Yeah, mate, it was a lot of fun, and it was nice to have Eric on there. And I, and I want to touch on Eric as well, and, and a couple of other things. But I, hold that thought, Mother Fluffer, because I want to get round to Eric because you've experienced Eric recently, uh, and you know Eric and his potential, and you've obviously had a massive impact on Eric as well. Massive impact. So we'll go back there. <clears throat> but we were talking about. Uh, and a comment came up around the, on the show, and it was saying, look, you know, oh, the guys get heated in these debates and so on. And in my mind, it's banter. It's joking. It's not, you know, we're, we're almost playing. Borderline taking a picture. You're serious, but you're not serious. You know what I mean? And the funny thing is, if you went, if you wind the clock back to any of these events, snapshot it in a hotel lobby at 3 a.m. after the show, a collection of the very best arm wrestlers in the world, maybe 10, maybe 15, maybe 20, sat around talking about arm wrestling. And you tell me that those conversations aren't more intense than those on a lot of points. But there's no animosity there. It's yeah. purely and simply, 
are you fucking serious? And, you you know, everybody's got their view on it, and we're all nuts deep in the sport, and that's that. You're talking about it, and you're enjoying it, because it's in you. You know, you're, it's not an effort to do it. It's the, the, your natural passion for the it's sport. Very natural. Exactly that, Like, man. I don't identify myself. Arm wrestling is not my identity. Like, if I, don't, if I don't have arm wrestling, I don't have an identity. Arm wrestling is just a part of me. Mm-hmm. You know, just like being a husband's a part of me. Just, you know, you know it's just... It's a part of me. It's something that I don't have to think about. It's just something that I do. You know? But it's funny, isn't it? Because, like, if something... How many times have you told me you're going to quit, Michael? I mean, be honest now. I might quit today. <laughs> what are you talking about? All the time. I've got a few things that, you know, people... I do get frustrated that you get um, so much criticism online, so much uh, stick online, because it's from people that don't know you at all. They don't actually know you. They associate you with something. Uh, and it's very frustrating, because often you'll read the comments, and it's it's difficult not to get a little bit upset that they're giving you that kind of uh, negativity, because it doesn't reflect who you are at all, and it's not even close to you as a person. Uh, and I know you react, and I know that you're the type of guy that actually does read the comments. Because <laughs> a lot of the time I'll see you responding, uh, and I know there's other people that I think it's water off a duck's back, and you're not that guy. So, it, and because we're so close, it 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 it, it does bother me that w- somebody I give a shit about is taking that kind of abuse over things that are nowhere near him as a person. You know what I mean? Right. And it's like, and the funny thing about it is, on the same, let's say we took Devon. Or Travis, or whatever, on the on the flip side of that argument, and what they won't appreciate potentially is that an hour before and an hour after that competition, me, you, Travis, me, you, Devon, are in a taxi going to the same goddamn show, and we're best. You know what I mean? Yeah. And it's it's a bit like oh, you want to show that in a way. I'd like to people to see that. Wait a minute, is this the guy we've literally just been out and had dinner with, like tonight, and we're going to go get a pizza straight after this? So what you see is a snapshot. It's an image of an event, a moment in time. Uh, the matches don't get more intense than yourself and certainly Devon in in the Trafford Centre. That was an encounter. The emotion that was running through your body that day, Mike, was as much... I mean, let's be honest, mate. I didn't even want to do the fucking match. No. Nope. You wanted to do the match. But that you even shouted at me from the stage, and I was laughing. You remember? I told you. You remember? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I was laughing my ass off. Yeah. And the funny thing is, that day you said to me, "I'm done. That's it." And you weren't joking. No, you... I was out. I was out. <laughs> you know what I'm and then like, three hours later, <laughs> I'm done. I sacrificed too much of this shit. Everyone will warm us again, ever. Yeah. No. And then three hours later, is a mother. <laughs> awesome. I had his ass on that coffee table. Ah, he on it, he did have his ass on the coffee table. Coffee table, <laughs> king of the world. But that's the kind of thing, almost, I wish there was a camera there. Well, we didn't know back then. No. We didn't no. know. We didn't. I mean, think of that footage. Oh, my God. If we still, if we had a camera going. Oh, my God. I don't as shit. That's crazy, amazing footage. You know what I mean? And the Devin after 2008 beating John, crazy footage. Oh, not, in the hotel? Can you yeah, imagine the? Yeah. Yeah. And, we, and the thing is, it's it's still we we still have those memories, right? Yeah. We're not gonna get, be able to monetize those memories, but no. we still have those memories. So, no. like I said, it's all man. And I, I'm not a guy who's like, oh. I, I'm upset that I didn't start YouTube 10 years ago when I first had a YouTube channel and I didn't know, or whenever it was I had a YouTube channel, I didn't know that I could could have started building a brand. I didn't know. I mean, is it unfortunate that I didn't do it yet? Yes, but I'm not going to lose sleep over it. I mean, all I can oh. do is move forward from here. And I'm blessed and thankful to have the followers, and I mean, the subscribers and the support that I get right now. I do believe that once people get to know me, uh, I think the funny, I have the best content of me is when the camera's not, you know what I'm saying? Oh, Just me being me. Without that, Rebecca and I have, we have so much fun on a daily basis. Corey and I have so much fun during training. You only, even in our footage, you only get to see a little bit. You Tiny know, there's bit. so much, 
And that's what I, Rebecca and I really, really, really are, are trying to. We have a, we have a, an idea that would allow not us the RV. To, oh, you the RV. <laughs> Yeah, we're 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 well, getting very we're getting very very close. I mean, amazing an idea, dude. Oh yeah, to amazing on the road showing. I'm and I'm talking about having an RV. I mean, and have an arm wrestling table pull up to Lowe's parking lot. RVs wrap, world arm wrestling champion, set it in the parking lot, start arm wrestling, folks. Get your phones, guys. Call whoever the champ is. Get him up here. Let's arm wrestle and just arm wrestle everywhere, everyone, and just film our own little reality TV show. Well, the funny thing is, mate, with the with the you know, without being sort of the and have you heard of Armbet? Yeah, oh, no, I don't want to be that guy. I already told Devin I'm gonna well, use his Armbet yeah. app while we're doing it. Oh I'm, I'm like, I will be in this town in six hours. Show up here. You know what I'm saying? And I'm filming everything, you know. Well I watched an episode of uh, Gary Roberts and Travis yeah. um on the unfiltered and and uh Arm TV the other day. If you, believe me, guys, if you haven't checked out Arm TV, Travis Page and Unfiltered, same as Jake, the Aussie arm wrestler. I believe this young man was on there the other day. Jake, I will check that out. I haven't had a chance to yet, mate. Get over there, check it you out. You have to contact me after <clears> you watch the video because I don't think you will have ever laughed as hard. I mean, you and I have had a lot of laughs, but I'm on a, I'm on a roll with this one. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> nice. Fun. Yeah. Yeah, I will, I'll, I'll have a look at that later on today. But, guys, go over there, check it out. I was looking at something on there the other day, and it's Travis being Travis, doing what he does, and he's saying, I'm going to do an arm a, an arm wrestling app. Okay? Yeah. Now, I don't know whether Travis is seeing Travis says a lot of shit, and Travis may or may not be seeing And he may or may not. He Let may me tell you, least, I don't know. Travis is not, not going to do an arm wrestling app. Well, if here's the thing, though. pays him to do an arm wrestling app, Travis is doing an arm wrestling <laughs> I think it would be, and, and, I, and I know Travis would respond to this, and he'd be like, man, he's motherfucking crazy. Listen, he doesn't need to do an arm wrestling app. Travis is thinking about, I need to be the guy in control. I need to dance to the beat of my own drum. Well, get dancing. Forget, it's wasted endeavor doing another one. There, if he, if Tra- and Travis is an extremely intelligent young man, let me tell you now, that, the guy is a success he's story. He's the best self promoter in the sport, and he's also clued. I'm not talking about he might not be you know Yale educated, Oxford University educated, but the man is smart as a arrow. He's clever now, and he also knows how to make money. He doesn't need to do an app. There are opportunities within the existing format that's running. In fact, every day he wakes up and takes three breaths. Fucker's losing money. He needs to think if he applies himself to what's already around him right now, which he's sorta of doing but not really doing, he'd already be sailing. Wouldn't be a problem. You don't need to recreate it. Work within it. The opportunity for for arm wrestlers within that is is colossal. It's massive. So he'd be better to sat working against Devon and just Crack no, I on. completely agree, and I'm not saying he had any intention of working against Devin. I'm just telling you, if someone paid him to work against Devin, he would work against. Him. Oh <laughs> yeah, Travis it's won't miss. For Travis, it's like if you're going to pay me, I will do it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I mean, it, he's not, in my opinion, he's not actively trying to. Travis just being Travis, you know what yeah, I mean? He's probably playing. He's probably but playing. I hope he. Does. If someone messaged him and was like, "Here, I want to fund this." And here's a million dollar blank check. Travis is like, we are having an app. You know, yeah, I mean, yeah. you know that's for, just for right. me, the, the opportunities that it presents to you are absolutely vast. And I think that he should get on it. And, and instead of, like I say, thinking about doing something of oh, his own, I'm 100% going to be using De- Devin's app on a lot of the things that I end up doing in the future. Because Which is a lot a, of the things I end up doing in the future will not just be showing up to arm wrestle arm wrestlers. It'll be showing mm. up to share arm wrestling to the world, you know. And, and few people will know the real Michael. How long have you wanted to do? I mean, forget before any of the app. And you've oh always wanted to be that guy. Always. What are you talking about? I, I'm a trophy whore. <laughs> I want to get in a car and go win trophies every weekend. Oh, you know? my, well, mate, I was laughing my ass off the other day when I saw the thing on ping pong. Uh, you, know I, I, you know what's you up? You know what's up? Mate, the the ping pong thing had me on the floor. I ju- it just popped up, and I was like, oh, my. He got his off. Yeah. <laughs> and that's when my back was bad. Like, I just drove 11 hours, 
and we're about to go to sleep. And one of my buddies, you know, he's got a beautiful home, and I look over and I see the ping pong table. And I'm like, "What's up?" He goes, "Dude, I'm oh. working up." I'm like, "Give me a minute. <laughs> I'll be right back." You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know, <laughs> all the back here wind sprints warming up. Oh uh, man. Yeah. I, mean, I, cool. still, I don't know if you noticed, I had steel toed boots on and jeans and everything. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't change see. clothes. I was just like, let's roll. You know what I'm did, you, did you win? Oh, did yeah. You won? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Still got yeah. it, mate. Yeah, still. I mean, it was, uh, it was, <laughs> it was good times for sure. We are pretty badass at ping pong, though, aren't you? You're not a bad player. Like, actually, pretty bloody Okay, so everyone I have ever played in my life, mm-hmm. I had beaten them as well. I've beaten them more, except for one guy. When I went to Kuwait City in 2014, my host wanted to play ping pong. I'm like, let's roll. I did not realize that he currently trained with the Kuwaiti ping pong Olympic team. Okay, okay. So he was one of these dudes that stood 20 feet behind the table, spinning. My best ever game, we played about 10 to 21. I had 11 points. That was my best. I mean, I just... I mean, against a player of that caliber, mate, that says a great deal, because... I mean, but you know, they are I'm really competitive. Like, oh, I was fucking it. mad about only getting 11 points. You know what I'm saying? Like, I was pissed. I was like, you're going to beat me again. Let's go. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I People think they finally shut the, the club down or something. It was bad. A lot of the guys, are in the, they don't realize that the level they'll go to. You know, I mean... When we were on the uh, in the presence show the other night, uh, Devon Devon was saying, hey, "Why would we want to go to the WF Worlds?" And a- Engin's like, "For the honor, <laughs> right?" And he said, oh, "The honor, it's for the money." We're having a bit of a laugh about that. But the the thing is, I said at the time, "You you think a guy would go any harder when there's money on the line than they will for the medal?" Uh, uh, no, you, they might say they would. Until the match starts. I don't give a shit what the match is for. Once it starts, you're in. <laughs> it's oh, like, right. right, okay. I don't care. It can be in training. It can be, you're in. You are on it. It's and, a and, true combat sport. I mean, when you grab a hold of another man's hand and your power goes into that guy's power and you mm-hmm. can find out who the top dog is, I'm a guy who leaves it all on the tail. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, we're yeah. pulling uh, and, and that leads into 506. Um, we have, you know, I don't want to go into, I've talked about this match forever, but oh. the fact is that match alone showed two men who were unwilling to quit at for all. four rounds. Four rounds of brutal arm wrestling. But mate, if in terms of, I mean, everybody talks about your, you know, I'm gonna, I swear I will do this. I want to get yourself and uh, Devon together and talk about you and Devon's rivalry through the years, and also Jerry, and to, because the, the 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 rivalry that you've had. And talk to me about Jerry Catteret, mate. I mean, you, I talk, I asked you about Dave, Dave Chaffee, Jerry Catteret. Let's just take a moment. Well, here's what I got to do. Um, I've got to go get a charger because my phone's about to die. Do that. All right, but it's going to take me about 90 seconds because I can go in my house, run upstairs, get the charger, maybe 120 seconds. I will be back with Monster Michael Todd after this short interlude. Should take around 90 seconds. Let's dedicate that time to the amazing Danny Tesh. <laughs>
ladies and gentlemen, that was Danny Tesh. What a man. What a man. <laughs> now then, Michael. Back to uh, where we left off there, mate, just before your charger ran out. Jerry Cataret. Jerry Cataret. Back Mountain. The Ginger Dread Man. Talk to me about that big ginger bastard. Our first ever encounter was Daytona Beach, 1995. I had missed weight for the 198 by eight pounds. I didn't know I was going until like 36 hours before, so I tried to cut from like 230 something, and I didn't make it. So I pulled the supers, the 199 plus, and Jerry and I pulled. I don't remember what round, but he put me out. Um, took his hand, obviously, because he's bit wrist pressing. Went to the rear of the pad, stopped the match about two inches before he uh, gets the pin, and I got off the back of the pad, and I caught two fouls out that. The next time we met was uh, 2007 at uh, the Sean Ray Classic in Denver, Colorado. Uh, he bent wrist pressed me round one. Round two, I met him in the center table on his shoulder and either pushed through his shoulder for the win or he fouled out not being able to move me out of the center, shoulder to shoulder. I had more range of motion back then. Finals, uh, he jumped on me pretty fast, and I think he got the bent wrist press hand. I don't remember. So at this point in our career, we are three to one. He's beat me three. I've beaten him one. We pull again. He beats uh, John Brazine 2010, defeats Buddy 2000. Uh, Richard Lucky, 2011, and in 2013, we pulled for that $10,000 UAL ring, mm-hmm. and that'd be 3 zero. 2014, UAL 8, $10,000 first place, $1,000 second. That's when him and John uh, <laughs> decided to collaborate <laughs> and lay down to one another, and I beat Jerry in a two-minute, four-second war. Yeah, that was a war. That was a yeah, scrap. So- now we're five to five to three career, and then 2018 we pull at 403. He gets the three one win. Now we're six and six. You know our time all time record is six wins against six wins, right? And then you move into 506. And I honestly thought I was going to smack him three zero. He is just problematic. So when he's asking how Devin is and how Jerry is, Jerry, if I could get if I could get my shoulder in, but I because I can't get any closer than this, I don't think it's possible for me to get in there before he gets there. I feel like if I could commit my shoulder first, I think I could I could beat him the way Devin did in round one, you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I think. But Jerry, I Jerry, stylistically, mate, is. A horrible, horrible match for most people. Well, you know, he's stylistically Travis had never I, beaten him in 15 or 16. Who? When Travis, Travis had never beaten him up to like 2016 WAL finals where yeah. he pulled him great and, 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 Her, and Her, Jerry Her, that was perfect, perfect execution. But prior to that, Jerry was horrific for him. Jerry's a problematic yeah. puller. And I, I, I made a claim the other day on the In the Presence show that, that I thought that Jerry was one of the most underrated Super heavyweights of all time. Because, well, yeah, I mean, the guy has gotten legit wins, but he's also lost to people he shouldn't have lost to, you know. Um, so, not not necessarily people he shouldn't have lost to. He just lost, you know. I mean, but Jerry has a winning record on most people, you know. Uh, Dave Chafe, he's never beaten Dave. He's ranked ahead of Dave because he got wins on me, you know what I'm saying? In North America, he's ranked ahead of how Dave. Many, how many times have they pulled, mate, Jerry and Dave? I would say two or three. I don't know the details. I wasn't involved in WAL at that point. You know, obviously no, I, I, I only pulled a couple of times, but I didn't think they'd ever pulled in a super match. And no. I'd, I'd like to see it. Yeah, I mean, I think Dave is strong enough to grab him low and pull him. You know, kind of how Todd Hutchins got that one good move on him. I think Dave's stronger in that and with a bigger hand and could do it every time. I don't know. You never know. I mean, I, but I do think. Jerry Cataret's a very bad match for Vitaly Lelatin. You know what I'm saying? So, yes, he is. Yeah. Uh, and that's, I mean, it's just crazy. Jerry, Jerry's a bad dude all the way around. Um, the reason he's problematic is what I what I trained so hard to take. 
he just gives me, you know. So, and the fact that I can't get close, to, I can't get my fist. Like, I know what to do. I just can't get my fist close enough to my shoulder on go to do it. You know, and, and with the thicker strap, you, you you really, you believe that the thicker strap's going to be night and day difference, don't you? In terms I of believe powers. the thicker strap will avoid me breaking my metacarp on my hand, mm. which is paramount. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah, you don't um, want to do that. I do not like the thicker strap buckle. That damn buckle hurts like shit. They sent me one. Big ass steel double D ring buckles. Horrible. You know? Mm-hmm. At least put a piece of leather that lays on the skin before you start cinching that double D ring down on the back of your hand. I mean, that's just, those are old school. That's old school AAA. Things have evolved greatly since then. For me, the really, years. really heavy Velcro is the one. If you've got a really significant piece of Velcro, and there's some Velcro that is like demonic strong, ridiculous. If you get the, you the get right a very Velcro, good piece of Velcro that was really tight, I'm mm-hmm. cool with that. Because it's a new, let's be honest, in the World Arm Wrestling League finals or any big show, you're going to have a new set of straps there and three sets of them. You know? Now, I know that you guys have pulled in some long matches, but some of that industrial Velcro is, is comedy strong. If you've got a piece of that that's like, you know, eight inches long, then there's no doubt about it. <laughs> you like that, son? Yes, That's yes. Funny. You know. That's fine. <laughs> oh, listen to that, bitch. Shut up. Ignore her. The, the, uh, yeah, she was, uh, never mind. Go and do something. Yeah, get out of here. My, my missus doesn't know a good yeah. thing when she sees it, I'll tell you. Loves me, that woman. Anyway. Lost my train of thought now. Yeah, the um, Velcro. Velcro. Velcro straps, eight inches. You get a long piece of that, nobody's coming out of it. I'm nobody's coming out. Truck. You know, let's do it. I'm cool, whatever, man. I actually was going to call Jerry. Think about calling him. I mean, it's, I just, I'm so busy right now. Um, but I was going to call Jerry see if he wants to. I mean, he's got family in northwest Arkansas, like three and a half hours. I mean, come on down and train. Come train, dude. Let's get some workouts together. And, can you uh, imagine can you an him on Holy. Uh, can you, honestly, can you imagine a train? You and him on a train. Oh, that'll be a train wreck. Come all on. you need is Gorilla standing oh. by. So who in the first round gets crushed by Gorilla next? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Jesus yeah. Christ. That would be absolutely horrific. Who's, who's the harder opponent, mate? Devin Larratt or Jerry Cataract? Devin Larratt. Jerry Jerry appeal, appears harder because stylistically he's a worse match. Devin is a greater threat. All I have to do to beat Jerry is not break my hand. You know what I'm saying? If I can, because I know what to do. I mean, think about round two of last year. Mm-hmm. Dude, I wasn't anywhere near a King's move. Perfect top roll. Counter top roll. Beautiful. But I couldn't do this because I had that injury. Yeah. I had everything I needed. All I had to do is push this way and put my shoulder behind it. I had everything. I was smiling at him. And then I, the smile turned to a frown because I'm like, oh, shit. <laughs> I've got the same injury again, you know. Um, but I'm, I go back and watch that match. I'm like, I had everything, everything. And I was just kind of bleeding because I had everything. And then I couldn't finish. The degree of gamesmanship that was going on in there as well was off the scale from both of you. I mean, I loved Jerry's innocent face at the end as well. I mean, it, I love that about Jerry. Jerry's pushing hard. He'll, he will push every every angle, you know. <laughs> yeah. I didn't know you oh. could do this. <laughs> <laughs> so I talked about this on uh, Friday's interview on Ozzy Arm Wrestler about that yeah. match and about. Okay. He's like, "Would you change how you reacted?" Hell no, I wouldn't change it because I wasn't do. I wasn't going to leave. No. People who know me know I'm not leaving Rebecca. No, you weren't. Rebecca's well, I was just going to say, Rebecca didn't move. She was over at the... Ch- Rebecca's <laughs> still in my corner, dude. I mean, they said, be you, but be the largest version of yourself. I'm thinking, well, this shit's going to get a lot of views. I'm about to grab this camera and lean on the Like I was, I was pissed. I was legit pissed because I heard Mark oh. say it can't fit like that. I'm like, the hell it can't. Y'all, that's the rules. Those are the rules. And I've had a fractured hand for four rounds. It's done. But I mean, it sucks really from is, a viewer's perspective. It sucks when it finishes like that. Nobody wanted to see it finish yeah, like that. But from from a, from a guy trying to provide for his family perspective, 
as soon as you win under the rules and you get three times as much for winning as you did for showing and you've already spent that money in your head, you don't really oh, yeah. find your family financial security on making the fans happy. Yeah, you brought the door, man. Said, now, Robert Drink would have done this, and you know this for a fact. All right, Michael, you're the champ. Take the hammer. But I got five grand. I want to see that match finish. I would have done it again. You, let me keep my Dif- money. Yeah, different set of circumstances, though. Because Wild Wild West, UA- UAL, I mean, that was nice. It was great that what happened. But the funny thing is that they had a set period of time. The telecast was a set period of time with the World Arm Wrestling League, and that just was not a, an option for anyone. So the, the, the show had to finish at that time. You know, no, we, I mean, in our, you. in our ear, you won't know, but in our ear, we're getting, you got another, we got another two and a half minutes of, sh- you know, you're getting these updates from oh, the voice okay. of God. Yeah, Vicky's yeah. literally saying, well, we're off air in two and a half minutes. For another match. No. Because the next match was going to be five or seven minutes long anyway. Correct. <laughs> so there wasn't. You know, yeah. the, all the, the, the people don't see the nuances of what is actually in the inner workings of the show. You're getting countdowns on your earpiece. You know, the times, you know, if you're talking about things, if the interview goes slightly too long, bang, you've got to cut it off. There'll be, the, there's a, a person in your ear saying, okay, you need to wrap it up now, wrap it up now, wrap it up that interview we're going over to. And, then, and another set of graphics is coming up. You've got to kill it. No, no, I got you. I didn't even think about that. But, yeah, so, yeah, I, I caught... Like I was telling him, I lost like 1,500 subscribers from that Wednesday to that Saturday. And we were a new channel. Yes. And I'm like, okay, so you want to call me a quitter or a coward because I won fairly. But the guy who flagrantly quit, that's okay. It's okay to take your arm up in the air a foot, take your hand off the hand peg, and have a conversation with the referee. Mm -hmm. But I'm the quitter. You know, so yes. And he asked me, what's it like being the most hated arm wrestler in the world? It sucks because that's not my goal. My goal is to be the most liked arm wrestler in the world. I'm epically failing. You know what I mean? I mean, but at the same time, dude, I am going to be true to me day in, day out. You know me. I'm the most transparent person you will ever meet. That's true. I'm if something hurts my feelings, you will know it hurt my feelings. If you piss yes, me off, you're going to know it piss me if, if I enjoy your company, you're going to know I enjoy your company. I can't fake it. I no, don't you don't do it. that well. Uh, no, that, that is not <laughs> your thing. <laughs> that ain't your thing. But, it, but the funny thing is, mate, I mean, let's be honest, it just sets up the other calls anyway. You, you, you've got... You don't, it's not over at that point. It's not like, okay, Michael and, Michael and Jerry are never going to pull again. You, of course you're going to pull again. You know, it is going to happen. There's no way, it, you know, it, how did, let's say, okay, let's say it hadn't been ended like it did. And the strap hadn't broken, and one of you guys pinned the other dude. Me, it still have been, it, it, me, it would have mattered, though. The point I'm making, it wouldn't have mattered. It would have mattered to me. To it would have <laughs> <would've>, <laughs> mattered for bragging rights on the night. But would it have changed the goddamn thing in terms of are you going to be pulling in this next season or would you meet up the season after? Absolutely not. Is it always a good match? Yes. Has been for years and will be again. You know, just the same as yourself and, and Devin. You know, a great situation. I and I are made to pull one another. And we're made to pull one another where I'm at the disadvantage physically. Because he is genetically superior. Yeah. I just have a heart and a desire to win that cannot be factored in. Like, you can't quantify, okay, well, this is Devin's leverage. These are this. This is Michael's leverage. This is this. These are this. Oh, shit, we have this heart and will to win over here. <laughs> How do we calculate mm-hmm. that shit in? You just can't. No. You just can't because you know me. There's a, there's a side of me that takes over, and that's a different dude, you know, and – Oftentimes, that side gets brought out against them. Yeah, die to win, bloke. When die to win, bloke shows up, he will die to win. And it's really, it's really difficult to beat that dude. It is. It's just tough. It's hard to beat that guy. And and the issue, the thing with that is, it's hard to train for that because so many times you train for a position. Well, you get it. 
you can't gain position on a guy who doesn't give a shit about. If you're training for a position, 90% of the people in the sport you're training to get to a position where that guy then says, okay, you got me, and I, I yield. But yourself, Fruda Hogeland, a couple of other guys aren't on that script. There is no position that you're not going to continue. To be fair, Jerry yeah, Calleret is a man where, who will contest an ugly stood match. I, uh, Todd Zilla. I've seen Todd. I've seen Jerry, Froda, yourself, and a couple of other guys. Yoshi Kanai is that guy. Yeah, he will pull anyway. Yeah, anywhere you want. Doesn't matter. You'd be in the worst position in the world. Match is still running. I didn't hear no bell. Hard yeah, to train for that. I understand how. See, that's the thing. That's the different degrees. That's the different degrees. There's 30 years in arm wrestling, and there's 30 years in arm wrestling. You know what I'm saying? And there's there's a willingness to to give everything you have on the table, and then there's the guy who maybe is more calculated, however you want to say it, who will allow that match to to end so that he can come back with a different tactic the next round. Sure. I'm sitting here. We're rewatching me versus Andre Pushkar. God rest his soul. I miss that man dearly. Rounds five and six, when he had no other option than to force a bit wrist press, or he would have lost. All I had to do to get the restart was intentionally foul. Mm-hmm. Never crossed my mind. No. As I'm watching him press my arm down, all I had to do is come off the back of the pad. Yeah. Never crossed my mind. No, that's not what you're there for. I'm going to hold on to that man until he pushes my arm as straight as it'll go. Yeah, I know. And I also still know. I didn't, I didn't think. It never one time did I think, oh, if I foul, I have another chance. You know what mm. I'm yeah, saying? I'm it's, like, it's I'm not. in this thing for all I'm worth right now. Either yeah, it's going to beat me or I'm going to pull him out of it, you know. And I also know that you, with hindsight, liked how that match finished. It, it finished the way it's about it. I, yeah. thought, I thought our story had a lot of chapters left. I'm glad that the book ended the way it did. Mm. Yeah, I mean, each time I think about that, dude, I get emotional. He yeah. was taken from us way too soon. Yeah, and it's funny when we were talking earlier on about the, you know, the the the, the element in the side of the sport that doesn't get reflected. Um, it's that side. It's like the side where if something happened to one of those guys, uh, it it really, 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 really hits you. It really resonates. And and that day when the news started to break uh, about the accident, that was I felt sick. I broke down immediately. Felt Couldn't sick. Believe it's true. sick. Couldn't believe it's true. Couldn't yeah. yeah, it was just like, uh, yeah. yeah. Anyway, we'll not talk about that. But yeah, that was a that was a horrific set of circumstances. Absolutely horrific. And the same can be said um, if it was any member of the of the arm wrestling community that you know and that you compete against and that you have competed against for so long, it's like almost um, you don't believe it's happened when it ha- when you and and maybe even more so because of the maybe even more so because of the presence of Andre when he was in the room. He was the guy that you see in the table, the guy who's the frowning, uh, aggressive, hard hitting, driving individual, and and Andre when. He's the guy backstage when we're we're just backstage, just doing stuff. Is nine day. It's just not the same guy. The last I'm, time I saw him was when we were drinking cognac and whiskey in his room <laughs> after our 2017 match. I had to catch a flight, <laughs> and we were all doing shots. He don't do shots with Ukraine. He just that's not smart. So but cool. uh, he gave. Uh, he gave me a shot, gave Rebecca a shot after the first couple rounds. I'm very non-wasteful, so I would just drink mine and Rebecca's. You know what I mean? 
that evening was some of my fondest memories. It was because it was just two guys. I mean, it, for lack of a better term, term, just went to war on the table, and now we're just fellowshipping after you know. It's yeah. that's the whole thing about that that elite elite of the sport. Regardless how much time you spend with that person, you share that experience on the table, um, and you have that mutual respect that lasts a lifetime mm-hmm. because you're one of the few people who know what it's like to feel that it's all on the line at that one match or, you know, to be at the very, very top of something. Um, it, it's, I don't know. I've been blessed. I've been blessed to, to have, to achieve the things I've achieved to have created the friendships that I have created to have had the amazing life experiences all because of this little sport we call arm wrestling, you know what I'm saying? It's yeah. crazy, man. Um, been a good time. Well, but it's just beginning, man. Just beginning. Heading to Dubai soon. Heading to Dubai. Heading to <laughs> Dubai. Um, you can probably tell because of the storm that we're in here that I do apologize to the viewers. The, the internet connection would appear to be shocking. I'm almost losing Mike, and we're 21 minutes into the second element after the interlude when the phone went flat. We are not done, Michael Todd. Mother plug. Will we ever be done? We may be never done on your life story, dude, because it's an evolving process. But I'm we'll wrap forever. We'll, <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> we'll bring the curtain down on this particular episode, but we're not going to leave it as long as we did last time. Put your comments down below, guys. Let us know. Uh, if you've got questions that you want us to ask Mike, let us know. Send them over, and we'll do it. We'll address them. A couple of things I want to cover on the next one would be your top ten heavyweights ever, mate. There's been a great deal of discussion around that, and I do want to cover that off. Uh, and I also want to cover off your uh, favourite arm wrestlers and matches of your career. I want to cover that off also. But, ladies and gentlemen, if this is your first time, firstly... Please get yourself over to Mr. and Mrs. Monster. Get yourself over to the Monster YouTube channel. Give it a Monster. plug, mother flopper. Monster and Mrs. Monster. <laughs> Monster and Mrs. Monster YouTube channel. Get yourselves over there. Check it out. If you're not already subscribed to this month's channel, please do so. Some great stuff on there and much, much more to come. He's off to Dubai in a couple of weeks. going to be some great stuff on there. If this is your first visit to Supernatural Strength Channel... We're only a baby channel. We haven't been going long, but please like, share, subscribe, hit the mother fluffing bell for notifications. And uh, if you haven't seen the previous parts of Michael's story, check those back also deep inside the minds of the world's greatest arm wrestlers. And you'll find a lot of stuff from Mike in there. Crazy times, stormy days, ladies and gents. Till we see you next time here on Supernatural Strength. Take it easy, peeps.